Hello and welcome. Today we're looking at the DRL Air Elite 115 race set from Nico Air. This set includes several racing gates that you could zip through with the included mini racing drone that flies really fast. So let's check it out. Now the drone comes in this uh, almost octagonal type box showing the drone there uh, passing through some racing gates and it has a little velcro strap here at the bottom and you can open it up and see all the accessories inside um, the drone the controller all all those uh, items that are included and uh, here you could see the side of the box the back of the box uh, showing the uh, controller and all the pieces that it comes with and uh, you know, you could download a simulator and it has, uh, you could edit it in beta flight. So overall, a very neat package. So let's open her up and take a look. We'll start here from the side. And you can see there's some manuals packed in there on the side. So we'll put those there. Let's slide out the box. Let's put this inside. Slide it out. Let me start seeing the drone. There we go. Right here. So you can see everything's all packed in into this uh, plastic mold. So let's remove the top. And here everything is uh, laid out here. And essentially you have your um, mini racing drone, it's battery, spare propellers, uh, batteries for the transmitter, which is pretty cool, uh, four AA batteries, uh, alternative uh, thumbsticks for the controller, uh, these uh, platforms or bases for the gates, uh, these connectors for the gates, uh, these little... Um, latches that you can connect the gates together um, a micro usb charging cable to charge the drone battery while the battery is in the drone you connect the micro usb cable and charge it and here are the uh, like the hoops for the gates and already the drone has its uh, propeller guards already installed but those can be unscrewed and removed so let's pull everything out and take a closer now, here are essentially the main items uh, assembled and out of the box uh, here we just put together one gate as a sample to give you an idea um, you have about enough in the box to put maybe a couple of gates together and you could do several combinations you could make one big gate or a couple of smaller gates depending on how you configure uh, these bases and connect them together so this is a sample of the gate, so we'll put that aside there. And then essentially you have the drone and transmitter. Um, looking at the battery here, uh, this battery is a 3.7 volt, 600 milliamp LiPo battery. And it's proprietary from Nico Air. So you could probably order a couple of these from Nico Air, uh, their website. So uh, basically the charge time on this um, is uh, about an hour, hour and 15 minutes. And you get about a five or six, maybe seven minute flight time. And that's essentially it. And to charge it, um, you require the included uh, micro USB cable. So let me show you how that works. We'll just pop in the battery here. So once you snap the battery in like so, and it, snaps in like that uh, right here in the front you'll notice a connection for the micro usb cable so you would just plug that like in. so and then the other part you would just plug into a wall adapter or a pc or laptop and just charge it and as it's charging you will notice that um, there's this light here at the bottom will be reddish or a orange reddish color and then it will simply go out as soon as it's fully charged and so that's essentially how that works 
Um, the controller also takes the four AA batteries we saw earlier, and it requires a small screwdriver, which the set does not come with, to unscrew both of these, open this top, and put the four AA's. And also you would need a screwdriver if you wanted to remove the propeller guards, as you will see down here, each little clip there has a uh, screw. So that's essentially it. Let's take a closer look at the quadcopter. Now this quadcopter is, uh, has a very interesting look to it. As you could see, it says uh, DRL there on the side for Drone Racing League uh, with a little sticker. It has four brushed motors that, are, that have yellow propellers on them, tri-bladed propellers. And it has a very sturdy, um, plasticky, rubbery body uh, that's very flexible and could really take a hit. So uh, that's uh, a really neat part of this drone, that even if you remove the propeller guards, this thing could take a few crashes and uh, keep going. So very sturdy design. Uh, not too many lights for orientation or if you wanted to take this for a little night flight. The main light that's here is this one on the back. Uh, there are no lights on any of the landing legs. So uh, orientation is better during the daytime. Uh, mainly, I guess you could tell because the back has this uh, yellow area with the battery. And that's essentially it. And actually orientation is a little more difficult with these um, this propeller guard because it's since it's all circular and very symmetrical it's hard to tell which end is forward uh, or or which end is back uh, but if you remove the propeller guards it becomes a lot easier to um, tell the uh, orientation and where the quadcopter is pointing uh, but overall a very neat looking design so yeah brush motors no camera uh, no GPS, no optical flow, nothing too fancy, just a good trainer uh, race quadcopter that's uh, small and very nimble. So that's essentially it for that, for the quadcopter. Uh, taking a closer look at the transmitter. This is also a very unique transmitter. Um, has a lot of uh, different controls on it. And we'll briefly go over them. Basically have your on off button. This is your trim button, so when you push this, uh, the transmitter will start vibrating, and at that point, you would push uh, the throttle down and move the uh, rudder in any direction to uh, trim it and to adjust the flight characteristics. And then you would push this again, and it will save the setting, and it will stop vibrating. And that's another note about this transmitter. This transmitter really doesn't have beeps, but it has more vibration. So uh, the feedback you get is more through the vibrations in your hand, and you won't hear uh, too many beeps. In fact, this might not even have any beeps at all. So that's just one interesting thing about this transmitter, because a lot of transmitters usually have beeps and don't have vibration, but this one does. Uh, this button right here is uh, it's for auto takeoff and auto land. Um, of course, this is your throttle and rudder. And right here you have different modes and each mode has uh, various speed levels, basically three speed levels. So the first mode right here is uh, Nico mode, which is kind of like a beginner uh, level. And that basically changes this to like a three um, a three channel transmitter instead of four channel. So it flies more like a helicopter where the throttle controls the altitude only and all your yawing and turning is done with the rudder. That's if you're in the beginner Nico Air. Then there's um, advanced mode, which is in the middle like that. And that's more like the traditional drone flight and uh, this has altitude hold, if you notice that the throttle is spring-loaded. So um, that will put it back into a four-channel remote control where you um, can control the altitude and the yaw with the throttle. And then you can control the um, direction uh, or side flight um, with the rudder. And then, of course, you could put this at the lowest speed 
and then the highest. And really the speed is just um, adjusting the tilt. So basically if you put it at three, the quadcopter will have a very steep tilt. And if you have it at one, um, there'll be less of a tilt and it will go a little slower and will be a little more manageable. And then the last mode here is, uh, I guess, P for professional uh, or ad really highly advanced. And basically it makes this manual, all manual. Now, I, I do believe it still retains its altitude hold, but um, it's no longer in stabilized mode. It's more like, almost like an acro mode. Uh, everything is very steep tilt, so it's very fast, very nimble if you put it in this mode right here. And, and of course, you can make it even faster by having it at three, combining that with the highest speed level. It will definitely tilt very sharply and very quickly um, with each uh, turn. So keep that in mind. I think a good uh, level for... Uh, intermediates or maybe even beginners might actually just be the advanced uh, with this set to either one or two uh, that's a good overall middle of the road setting where um, this flies more like a traditional altitude hold drone and at the same time it has some speed but is is more stabilized and it's easier to manage um, I only recommend the highest setting if um, you know you're really uh, skilled with this kind of uh, drone flight uh, or maybe you've practiced quite a bit you may want to go to the highest setting and then uh, here at the top these are essentially like different flip buttons uh, where you could uh, push them and then uh, push the rudder in any direction and they will do all sorts of barrel rolls so uh, this is a very acrobatic uh, quadcopter and uh, these are all essentially like flip buttons uh, where you could do two different kinds of uh, or I think a handful of different kinds of flips so that's essentially it for the controller it's uh, very comfortable and easy to manage and um, that's essentially it for the quadcopter and controller there's no special app for this there is a simulator that I believe you could download for PC or Mac and uh, you could actually use your controller with that simulator and um, control the virtual aircraft that's on that simulator. But uh, there's no app that's used to um, stream Wi-Fi FPV or anything to that effect um, because this is not a camera quadcopter uh, or FPV quadcopter. Although I have seen uh, out there some people modifying this and putting... Uh, small cameras on this FPV cameras and they are able to uh, fly this with uh, 5.8 gigahertz uh, FPV so you you are welcome to try to modify it uh, as long as you don't keep the weight too high because this is a relatively small quadcopter and it's uh, brushed motor uh, but if you could manage to find a very small FPV camera perhaps you could do a little bit of uh, FPV flight with this uh, you know with a 5.8 gigahertz uh, set of goggles but um, So that's it for the controller. That's it for the quadcopter um, Essentially just setting this up for a first flight once everything's charged and all the batteries are put in You would turn this on by pushing this little button right there until you see some flashing lights like so and Then you would lay it flat here. You would turn on the transmitter and um, you'll see it blink a little differently. And then you would bind it by uh, putting the throttle up and down. And you'll see it goes solid. It might start blinking within a few seconds because uh, I believe it loses connections, a connection if it doesn't receive input within a few seconds. But you can always uh, rebind it. And um, one recommended first step is to calibrate the gyros before each flight. So making sure that this is at the ground level flat without moving after you bind it you bring both the throttle and rudder to the middle let's do that again and you should see a sequence of um, yeah so you see a little sequence of beat of uh, blinks there and that means your gyros have been 
calibrated and now the quadcopter should be more stable and easier to manage so that's essentially it uh, we'll take this out for a quick little flight and uh, have a look at how it handles